Picking the right panel for your project is very important and there are many things that go into that decision, including location, building design, local codes and requirements, look, and more. Today, we are looking into the SMI two-inch mechanical seam profile and learning about its application, engineering, installation, and when you should and shouldn't choose it for your roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this series, we look at a specific profile and discuss when you should and shouldn't use it, installation requirements, applicable engineering, and more. Our profile today is the SMI two inch mechanical seam standing seam profile. It's a standing seam mechanical lock system, which means it's installed with hidden clips and fasteners on the male leg, and the female leg is seamed to engage the panel. It has a maximum 18 inch panel width when it's formed with steel, and a maximum 16 inch panel width when it's formed with aluminum. It can be formed with 22 gauge to 24 gauge steel or 040 aluminum. If you use the same material in a heavier gauge or a narrower width panel, the engineering is still valid. This panel uses approximately five and 13 16 inches of material to be formed. Mechanical seam profiles are effective in both steep slope and low slope applications. They are hydrostatic systems, which means they can hold water and remain weather tight as it drains slowly off the building. The SMI two inch mechanical seam can be installed at slopes as low as a half 12 for steel and a 212 for aluminum. If it's being installed below a 212 for steel, you must install sealant per ASTM E2140. Another differentiator for this profile is that it's a structural panel, meaning it can be used over purlins in an open framing application. We'll talk about some engineering specifically for open framing later in this video. We talk about engineering often because it uses actual data gathered about the exact panel profile and ensures that if you install your roof per those specifications, you're giving it the best chance possible to perform. For the two inch mechanical lock profile, there is a UL90 construction number available, but there are also a variety of engineering specifications available from tests performed in a laboratory by Sheffield Metals. The SMI two inch mechanical seam panel has been tested in steel and aluminum over plywood, BDEC and BDEC with ISO for UL580 and 1897 uplift testing, ASTM E1680 air infiltration testing, and ASTM E1646 water penetration testing. Also, ASTM E2140 water submersion testing was performed for steel over plywood. The panel also is rated for class four impact resistance through UL2218 and can be used in a class A fire rated assembly via UL790 testing. Specific to open framing, it has uplift testing for steel with ASTM E1592 and foot traffic testing with Factory Mutual 4471. FM 4471 says it can take a 250 pound concentrated load. For projects located in Florida or Texas, the panel holds both FBC and TDI approvals when using steel over plywood, BDEC, and BDEC with ISO, and an additional TDI approval for steel over open framing. This panel is eligible for use in WeatherTight warranty projects through Sheffield Metals and qualifies for the standard SMI 40-year PVDF paint warranty and Galvalume warranties. Some upcoming testing for Sheffield profiles includes finishing HVHZ approvals for Florida, upgrading some non-engineered profiles to have testing, and doing even more testing on current engineered profiles. Stay tuned for updates on those. This panel is a good choice for steep slope and low slope applications, and when we see it, it's almost always commercial. It's a great choice over open framing and it carries a UL90 rating up to a four foot purlin spacing. It's good if you want an engineered system, are interested in commercial weather tight warranties, or have a building with hydrostatic conditions. This panel isn't a great choice if you have enough slope for a snap lock profile and you don't wanna use the extra labor for seaming. Also, the two inch rib is pretty large, so in some applications, it might not have the look you want. And I would not suggest it for DIY projects either. Now let's look at how this goes down on a roof with solid decking. Make sure to follow the engineering guidelines as to what deck substrate you can install over, proper clip spacing, approved accessories, and other additional requirements. I've already fabricated these panels with a one inch bend at the eave and a one inch box at the top, but if you wanna learn how to do it yourself, there's a couple links in the description. On the deck, the panel hooks onto the eave, is pinned on the box end with a couple fasteners, 
and uses appropriate engineered clips on the male leg depending on the material and substrate. There are multiple types of clips used for various engineering conditions. The specific engineering requirements for your project will determine the appropriate clip to use. This bead of sealant prevents siphoning of water at the end of the panel. The next panel hooks onto the eave. The female leg is placed over the male leg and is seamed together. There are two kinds of bends, a 90 degree seam and a 180 degree seam. Make sure you know which is required with the engineering and I can tell you most of the time it's a 180 degree seam. This process is usually completed with a robotic seamer. I'm using a hand seamer for this example, but it takes a lot of extra labor to seam the entire roof of the hand seamer to 180 degrees. Now, hand seamers are good for when putting in a 90 degree bend at the clip locations. This accomplishes a fixed point while you're laying panels, so you can go back and seam the panels with a robotic seamer later, per the seamer manufacturer's instructions. By putting that 90 degree seam in over the clip, it makes it easier for the robotic seamer to finish the 180 degree seam. I'm finishing the panel using the 180 degree hand seamer as an example. Again, not a typical way to do it unless there's hard to reach areas or something like that. Robotic seamers will give a cleaner, more consistent seam and are obviously easier on the installer. Because the panel is only pinned at the top and we use butterfly clips, which come in two parts and move freely, it can expand and contract as needed at the eave. The Sheffield Metals installation details has a great thermal movement chart that shows how much of a gap you should leave at the eave based on the panel metal, deck material, and panel length. Over open framing, there are a different set of clips used. The open framing clip floats the panel off the purlins approximately a half an inch to help reduce purlin chatter. Details for this profile are available at sheffieldmetals.com and those details are recommended for both commercial and residential projects. This panel is very popular in the industry due to its low slope and structural capabilities. If you want to know more about this panel or other panels that Sheffield Metals offers, I'll link their profile page in the description below. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel, and as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.